Surroundings, Daniel. Who do you surround yourself with? Says everything in so many ways. I agree. It reflects directly upon yourself. How you surround yourself with people. That's a big thing. How do we choose who to surround ourselves with? You know what? There was a period of time when I was coaching and doing energy work and reading people that I surrounded myself with a lot of quote, broken people. People who needed help, who needed rescuing. You know what I realized it said about me was that I had to be somebody's healer, mm -hmm. their savior. And then eventually I realized, oh no, I'm martyring myself for no reason. Because in effect, nobody's really broken. Nobody needs healing and they certainly don't need me to do it. And that was freeing for me because once I eliminated that concept from my mind, that I didn't have to martyr myself to save other people, didn't have to hurt myself, we can take on physical pain, mm -hmm. suffering, anguish, to help other people and set them free. And I set myself free. So it really goes to say, think for a moment, who are you surrounding yourself with and what does that say about you? And not that they define you, but you define yourself and, and in so many ways attract those people. I, yes, I get it, I have talents. Like you said, I help people feel amazing, mm -hmm. instant healing, I get it. But it's an illusion for me to believe that I'm the fixer, that I'm the one who's making the change. Absolutely. Right? The change has to come from within. Change comes from within. So if it comes from within the, uh, the other person, then what does that say about me? It says a different thing. I'm just providing insight. Mm -hmm. And once that changed, then the nature of my clientele changed. The relationships I had, I wasn't rescuing people giving them money, a place to stay. I wasn't doing all of these things. I didn't have to do that anymore because the concept of myself changed. Mm-hmm. That is strong. Right? That is strong. Because I know there were times that I went through life hanging out with the good old boys. I was drinking a lot. Oh. I was not showing up to my job a lot. Okay. <laughs> I was really just in a rut with people. And what was that concept of yourself? The three and fun me. Oh, it's the, fun, the free and careless, fun. the lack of care, the lack of passion, the lack of drive, thinking that the world owes me something. Oh, dang. And so I went out hanging out with these boys every weekend. We were always in Frankfurt, Germany. We were in split Croatia. We were in Luxembourg. We were all over the world. Barcelona, Milan. We went to Milan. That's the last place we went together. And then I was like, I have to make a change. I have to know that because I surrounded myself with these guys, that was the pattern we were falling into. Never having money because we were always out partying, wondering what you're gonna eat the next day when you have five euros left to eat on. And you're like, what, what, how is this affecting me? When I lost my first job, I worked at a store called Mango. Oh, I know that store. And it's a woman's clothing store. They yeah. do have some men's, but it's geared more towards women. And um, I got fired. And I never told anybody I got fired. I always said Secret I quit. Secret shame. Yeah, I always said I quit. You're a manga reject. Yeah. <laughs> That's what, what it was. That's what happens when you show up and <laughs> you haven't showed up the month previous. Uh-oh. And so surroundings is something you just have to be careful with. You have to be aware. You have to know it can affect you in so many ways. If you surround yourself with people who are constantly down or they rely on you for their happiness, it just doesn't work. It's yeah. hard. It's really hard because I have a lot of friends who come to me and they're like, I need to talk, I need to talk, I need to talk. You mean and they I'm need like, to dump? Yeah, and I'm so like, you're a so dumpster you want to put your problem on me. You want to reflect them on <laughs> me to get the answer that you already know inside of yourself. Yes. And I've been through that. I've done that. Even recently I've done that where I felt so insecure that I made a call to my significant other's best friend and I was like, hmm. Let me unload for an hour about him cheating on me, about all this. When in reality, it was just me. It wasn't even him doing anything. It was the insecurities coming from inside of me and reflecting that on somebody else. And you don't want to surround yourself with those type of people. And I can feel the tension in the, the friendship now. It's awkward. 
And you created that. I made it happen. So <laughs> the only way attention. to separate from that is just by saying, hi, how are you? And come back from it, rebound from it. But you have to know how to surround yourself with, with the right things. But we right create people. our entourages. This is, this is not, they don't randomly happen. That is true. They don't randomly happen. Our entourages, the French word for surrounding, our entourage don't happen by accident. We That's just true. met last week. Amen. You're in my entourage. Yeah. How is that possible? I can think back to a few moments where I feel like I manifested you because I I lost touch with a, with a really good friend of mine and he just wasn't ready to be a friend and to act like a friend. And I said, okay, well, if you're not going to be a friend, I, ha I had to step down my, my, my boundaries, my barriers, and to say, I'm not going to be one of those people that accepts dishonesty. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna be one of those person. I will not be lied to. That's really the concept that I create. I'm not, I will not be lied to. And I, and I remember specifically saying, God, if you're gonna take this friend from me, please give me someone else mm -hmm. and who can show up and who can be on us who can be my friend and then you called and we talked and i was like wow this guy's a male version of myself and it was way better than i could even imagine but it was exactly what i had asked for i think we have to be really aware of of who we're asking for to come into our lives because mm -hmm. what you preach is what you get <laughs> You know, if you, if you want to be happy and healthy, you need to ask for that. I need a happy and healthy friend who's going to be there to support me, and I there for them is just as equal. You want to make sure that it's balancing counterparts. You want to make sure that when you go out and you meet somebody, don't just jump to the first thing and be like, oh my gosh, we're best friends. You have to really be, you have to talk to them, you have to connect to them, you have to kind of get an insight on them. Be honest. Be honest. I mean, I've I've been around. I've been to 30 countries. I have friends from multiple places. I moved to America and I didn't want friends. Mm. I didn't want to surround myself with the wrong people because it was my time to shine as a person. Mm -hmm. As a 25-year-old male, it was time for me to get it together and really know, okay, if I'm gonna put you in my friend circle, it's gotta be real. Top five. Yeah, like, you might <laughs> see MySpace, what was it, MySpace? I don't top know, 12 or top something six, like something that. like that, T-Mobile, I'm like, top I'm five. trying to have a top fan. I'm like, I want, I wanted to make sure I did things right this time. Mm. And so surrounding yourself, it even comes down to the area where you live. Yes. If you live in that area and those people are around you, what type of people are they? Evaluate that. What type of stuff is going on around you? You have to look at each and every thing. And I know sometimes it's really not easy because you see a place, you're like, oh my gosh, I love it. But when you make a friend and you let them into your energy. Oh, yes. You just have to make sure that that energy is going to match yours. Because if you give out and they don't give back, they are soul sucking. And you don't want that. You don't want to have to be... To overcompensate yeah. for what they're not giving you. Absolutely. I think it was, I remember, I don't know if it was yes, you know, two nights ago, Frank was like, you know, I was asking Frank what he thought about you, and he just thought that you were just great. And, and I said, you know what I like about Daniel is that he brings the best out of me. And I had to think for a minute of some of my friends who I don't engage with all the time anymore, but I was like, wow, I realized that there came a moment where they stopped bringing the best out of me. Mm -hmm. And that's when the relationship changed. Now, it doesn't mean that I cut this person out of my life and I don't love them anymore. I just realized like, if I wanna be better and better and better and to be my best, if I'm with someone who brings the, the worst out of me, then it could just be, feeling their feelings or judgmental or whatever that could be, then that's not that's not a dynamic that I need. And Absolutely. You know what this also makes me think of? I think it's important to say this. If you think that you are a sick person, who are you gonna surround yourself by? Sick people. Sick people, doctors, mm -hmm. medical, you're gonna your your environment, your stage is going to be the hospital. Let the weak say I'm strong, the sick say I am healthy. Mm -hmm. And the concept is, is like, 
if you find yourself in a place, because I remember when I was dealing with hypothyroidism, I remember I used to say all the time, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. I used to say that all the time. And I would repress myself and I held this energy here. And I dealt with hypothyroidism and everything around me started to show me, oh, you've got hypothyroidism. Oh, you're tired. Oh, you need to come for more doctor's visits. You need to get your blood drawn. And I'm, and then I was, and then all of a sudden it hit me. I'm going, oh my God, I'm spending every freaking weekend going to the doctor. Uh -uh. And I was like, I'm wasting three to four hours a day doing this. I was building my life around. I said, no, I don't have that no more. Mm -mm. Absolutely. And not. I started feeling healthier and healthier, more energy, more energy. And I just don't believe it. I just don't believe that that is who I am. Now, I'm someone who's listening and saying, oh, but what do you mean? I've got this diagnosis on paper, it says this. Well, what was yesterday, today's fantasy is today's facts. Going to the moon, that was a fantasy. It's today's fact. Mm -hmm. It's exactly true. So it's, you have to remember that yesterday's fantasy is today's facts. Yesterday's paper, it's just a piece of paper. Nobody can put on a piece of paper who you are or give you a death sentence. Amen. If you're a criminal, where are you going to go? You think yourself a criminal, where are you going to go? You're going to go to jail. You're going to be in the courthouse. You're going to be in front of a lawyer. Absolutely. So it really is, is who am I? And then it goes into the fact, who am I surrounding myself with? And what stage am I playing out my life? I agree 110%. I think that's an important thing. Like, why are we letting somebody else define us? Well, it's even a self defined self definition. Let's think about this. There's a lot of students who want to become masters, and there are a lot of healers and a lot of coaches and a lot of professionals out there, and they're constantly going back to school. Get an, an MS, an MA. I'm gonna get a PhD. I'm gonna get this. Well, if you're still in school, I guess you're not the master. That is very true. If you're still learning, how can I? How can I accredit you to be a master? Now, I'm not saying actively going to school because I'm actively going to school. But I know that this does not define me, that mm -hmm. I'm some ignorant person and I don't know. It's a phase. But we do identify ourselves with, oh, I'm, I'm forever a student, I'm forever learning. And I get that. Yeah, we are forever learning in the context of life. We will always be learning. But if you have some concepts of yourself, I will never be good enough until I get 50 different degrees and certifications and all this. We are talking about this last night then at what point will you be the master? These are questions to ask yourselves. Mm -hmm. I know it's a little bit of a mind maze, but it really is worth exploring. It's important because it takes me, every time she speaks, it takes me to a place where I'm like, oh my gosh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's very true. I mean, life is a big, a big game that they want us to play. Life is a game where society has put us in a shoe box and said, you're that type of shoe. I always ask myself, if everyone around me is wearing Nikes, do I have to wear them? No. If everybody's on the trend of wearing those bell-bottom pants, do I need to wear them? No. I love bell-bottom pants. If your group of friends is getting into a habit or your surrounding is starting a habit and you don't like it, what do you choose to do? Do you choose to stay in it or do you choose to walk away? Who am I? Mm-hmm. And that ties into exactly what we talked about, being self-aware. What makes you happy? If your surroundings don't help your, don't help your self-awareness, why be there? Because your surrounding can also give you clarity to who you are. Oh, very much so. It's contrast. Mm -hmm. it is, it's black and white. And that's why it's so important to know who to surround yourself with and how to do it. And I don't mean like, just go ahead and uproot yourself and move to an expensive neighborhood. I mean, how do you do it? Am I clubbing? Am I part of a local club? Am I riding horses? Am I partaking in adult activities that shouldn't be happening? That's a big thing. Drugs, alcohol, whatever scene you're into, is that the surrounding that you want to live in forever or do you want to make a change? Will it bring the best out of you? Mm -hmm. And to make that change, you have to know to be aware. You know what? It actually brings me to one more point is that I put my kids in a very expensive private school slash daycare 
and one day one of my kids they were pulling up to our house it's a nice house mm -hmm. my house and one of my kids said, our house is too small. It's not like the other kids in, in the school. And I'm going, ours is pretty big. <laughs> and I was just like, and, and it was at that point I realized like, oh, my kids are learning from their surroundings these things. Mm -hmm. And I started on this search and I was looking for the right school and we found a small school, 150 students. And these are rich families, poor families, in between families, everyone in between. And it's not the sexiest facilities. It's not like the best in the world. It looks like a school from Germany or France from you know, 1985. Mm. It's a little rundown looking, but the heart and soul of the pastor, the people, the, the students, it's really authentic. And that honestly for us was one of the best decisions. And so you might think, oh, surroundings, oh, it means expensive, it means the best. It really is knowing who you are and what you what is your ideal for yourself. Your goal, your mission, your drive, whatever you want, that is your surrounding. Is that surrounding going to benefit me, or is it going to take me down with it? That's the most important thing. Is it going to benefit me or take me down with it? And only you can decide how you want to surround yourself and who you want to surround yourself with. That's the biggest lesson. Benefit or go six feet under. <laughs> I want to surround myself. Yes. With you. <laughs> yes, all day, every day. Happiness. What is it? How to get it? Where to find it? <laughs> what is that image that makes me completely happy and ready to face the world? asking it, do you want to be set free? And he kept saying no. I'm we very confused by that. And I go, wait a minute, let's change the word. Do you, do you want to be released? And he said, yes. But from the turtle's point of view, if the turtle already feels free, you cannot set 